Hey there! Subscribe to my channel. And also press this bell icon. So you never miss any new updates cause whenever we upload new video you will get a notification on your phone. Hi, today in my bench I have this national radio cassette recorder. The model number of this unit it is the RX-5135. So let's get started. Now taking a look at the unit itself we can see that it is dirty as hell. Also, we can see that there is a lot of scratches in the body of the unit. Also, we can see that there is a rubber belt in here. And they are, apparently, they are what hold the door of the uh, cassette mechanism closed. So, wow. Taking a look at the speakers, we can see that there is some damages in the speaker cones in this one and in this one as well also in the uh, tuning shutter window we can see that there is some scratches don't know what they are oh they are uh, superficial scratches also the uh, telescopic antenna it is gone and someone uh, tied a uh, wire instead of it as an antenna so this unit it is in a rough shape so as usual I will start by checking the condition of all of the buttons and the knobs and the switches in the unit and we can see that the tuning uh, knob it turns and it controls the needle but it produces a really awful sound also this switch it is working this switch also working also the switch as well let's move to the uh, tape mechanism we can see that this is the eject stop button and appears to be working the play it is almost frozen the rewind it is working the uh, forward also working the pause as well uh, the volume it is also working as we can see and the balance it is also working and here is the tone key it is also working so let's turn the unit around and take a look at the back nothing look uh, damaged or bro broken in the back and that is good so what I'm going to do now, I will take this cover off and take a look inside. So here is the unit has been opened and it turns out that the front cover of it, it what must to be removed. And in order so I can remove it, there is seven screws that I had to remove. And that is uh, four from the corners and two from here and one in the battery compartment. And after some wiggling, I was able to separate the two uh, clamshell body. Now, taking a look at the front cover, we can see that there is a lot of dust and dirt in it. And that is really bad. Also, if we take a look at this speaker, we can see that the speaker itself, it looks okay. But the comb, we can see that there is a damage uh, or there is damages in it. As for the other speaker, we can, uh, we can see that it is in a better shape from the first one. Also, I noticed that this unit, it has a really interesting uh, tuning mechanism. It doesn't use a tuning shaft like the conventional 
tape recorders do it uh, use a, a spiral uh, rod instead now this spiral rod it is it has these grooves as you can see it is also control the tuning needle and also it control this uh, rail over here and this rail it is uh, what control the variable capacitor now taking a look at the unit itself we can see that there is a a minor or there isn't anything it is broken except for this what is this oh here's the the mic and looks like that it is broken from here okay also we can see in the tape mechanism that there is a lot of dust and dirt also we can see in here that someone was inside of this unit at some point in the past and he mess with the uh, shielded uh, coaxial cable or the shielded wire that it is connect the uh, audio head to the amplifier section in the main board and he must cut the wires and he uh, tapes them together as we can see that is really bad also we can see that the uh, variable resistors they are dirty as hell Beside these uh, notes, everything looks okay and everything looks fine. So what I'm going to do, I will start with the front cover and remove uh, the two speakers in order so I can clean it. And then I will uh, remove the mechanism from its place in order so I can clean the main board underneath it and start the cleaning up process before I try to power on this unit. So here is the unit has been completely disassembled and taking a look at the main board and that is beneath the uh, tape recording mechanism. As we can see it is all built in the same uh, PC board all of the components are built in the same PC board. Uh, the radio section, the tape section, and the amplifier section. And it looks very, very good. Besides that it, it is dirty as hell, it is very, very good. Nothing appears to be broken and there is no corrosion in the component and that is really, really good. And here is the rod antenna for the uh, AM band. And as we can see, a lot of uh, dust and dirt even in this uh, side of the PC board. So yeah. And this unit, uh, as we can see from the soldering, from the type of the soldering, there is no work has been done to this PC board. And that is really good. So if we put the uh, main PC board aside and take a look at the cabinet or the uh, back uh, cover of the cabinet we can see as we saw earlier there is a lot of dust and dirt but this can be easily removed. As for the speakers we can see that this speaker the comb of it uh, the color indicate that this thing was sitting in the sun or got exposed to the sun and this is what caused the uh, comb uh, color to be uh, changed like this but this comb it is okay the other one as we can see it has a moisture uh, marks on it so yeah my guess is that this unit was uh, stored in a dam or a uh, moist environment and this is what causes the uh, 
this kind of effect and the speaker and in the body of the unit so yeah and here is the front cover as we can see it is dirty as hell but there is no uh, broken uh, sides or broken uh, edges in it so yeah the interesting thing that in the uh, tuning compartment or in the tuning uh, assembly that this is the uh, spiral type uh, tuning rod and if we take a look at it I don't know if it is going to be showed on the camera we can see that some of the uh, grooves on the uh, tuning rod they they has been eaten away so yeah there's the one of them as we can see and here is the this huge this huge spot in here so mm, well this is what happened when the designers use this type of uh, uh, tuning assembly uh, there is no uh, tension relief in order so if the uh, the, to, uh, the user uh, get into the end of the uh, tuning scale and keep turning so yeah this is what happened so yeah so I will have to fix this and realign it uh, perfectly in order so it can work now also I found that the tuning scale uh, it is built in into uh, the uh, cabinet the front cabinet assembly so yeah as for the tape mechanism if we take a look at the tape mechanism we can see that one of the hinges of the uh, the door uh, closing mechanism we can see that it is broken from here but beside that the uh, tape mechanism it is in a perfectly good condition it is dirty but beside that nothing appears to be broken and here is the the duct tape that someone used in order so he can uh, repair the cut uh, shielded wire of the audio head we can see that all of the mechanic it is made of plastic wow the gear assembly it is close to the uh, Sanyo mechanism so yeah wow a uh, brass uh, rail of the motor that is really interesting the flywheel it is made of plastic so wow very very cheap but it is good quality so what I'm going to do now I'm going to uh, start the cleaning process in order so I can remove all of this dust and dirt uh, fix and glue the uh, combs in order so they can work uh, correctly and then I'm going to start cleaning the uh, tape mechanism in order so I can uh, restore it full working condition so I decided to start the repairing process with the two speakers and I started by checking the voice coils in both of them using the VUM meter and the test shows that both voice coils they are working fine and the resistance inside of them it is within specs so after that step it is confirmed I uh, move to the next step and that is cleaning up the baskets and the uh, combs after the cleaning up process it is done i rejuvenate the combs and here is the final result that i was able to get now after i uh, 
repair them, I tested both of them on a separate uh, amplifier and the test shows that these two speakers, they are working in an excellent way. And I'm sure that these two speakers will serve many years ahead. So after the two speakers, they are done, I move to the next step and that is the uh, spiral type uh, tuning rod and uh, I fix the uh, these two uh, grooves uh, they were broken after I clean it up and it turns out that the other uh, spots uh, or the other uh, broken spots in the grooves they are not important so I left them as they are uh, but I file the edges on them in order so they can they don't cause uh, cause any kind of problems. Also, I fix the uh, the shaft, uh, the down shaft, and the upper shaft in the uh, tuning uh, rod in order so they can fit uh, snugly into their place and they don't wiggle around. And here is the final result that I was able to achieve. No, so after the uh, tuning rod it is repaired, the next step I'm going to clean up the, uh, the cabinet and then I will proceed from there. So here's the back part of the cabinet has been cleaned and it is now cleaner with about 90% from it was before. Also the front part of the cabinet also has been cleaned and when I clean it up, I notice that there is this crack from this side of the cabinet and also from the other side of the cabinet, there is this uh, long crack. And also this part of the cabinet or this edge, it is also cracked. And there is also a uh, rust residue. So I believe this unit got exposed to not only moisture, also it got exposed to water. And this is what causes this rust. So yeah. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to uh, glue this broken edge from here and these two broken edges and then I will proceed from there. So here's the broken edges has been glued and now I'm going to let this sit for a while until the glue get hardened correctly. In the meanwhile I'm going to start with the mechanic in order so I can uh, clean it and repair it correctly. And here is the mechanic has been completely disassembled uh, and boy and boy this mechanic it is dirty as hell wow so what I'm going to do now I will continue the cleaning up uh, process grease all of the joints and then reassemble the entire thing and we will see how this thing will work so here's the mechanic has been fully reassembled after I clean it and I grease up all of the joints in it and as we can see the result is, is very very good also I fix the uh, hook uh, assembly and that is what keep the door closed and also I uh, glued the uh, the broken hinge in it and here is the uh, assembly it is now fully operational and if I push the uh, stop eject uh, button, we can see that the uh, mechanism it is working perfectly. Also, I uh, reattach and uh, fix uh, the broken uh, shielded wire that connect the audio head to the uh, a preamp circuitry or to the amplifier, to the head amplifier circuitry in the main board. And here is the result that I was able to achieve. Also, I replace the uh, the pinch wheel, uh, or in another term, I replace the rubber in the pinch wheel because the old pinch wheel it was dried out and cracked. 
Now, when I searched my inventory for a replacement pinch wheel, I found uh, the rubber from a another uh, pinch wheel. So what I did, uh, and because this one was cracked and as we can see has been peeled off the uh, pinch wheel uh, reel, I just slide the, uh, the new uh, rubber uh, instead of the old one. So yeah. And here is the pinch wheel. It is working like it should be without any kind of problems. Also, uh, if I turn the uh, mechanism around, we can see that I install a new belt uh, instead of the old one. The old one was uh, somehow uh, got uh, wider, so yeah. So the original uh, belt should be at this thickness, as we can see, so yeah. Now, I noticed something uh, interesting when I was uh, reassembling the entire thing that the, uh, the motor, and if I just turn it, as we can see, it squeak. So this tells me that the grease uh, in the bearing, it was all uh, dried out or gone. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this motor. Uh, clean the the bearing and the shaft of it and put uh, some uh, grease in it and I believe this motor it is good to go so here's the motor has been removed from its place and I also uh, cleaned the uh, shaft in it and also the bushing with some alcohol and I grease it up and as we can see, if I turn it, it doesn't squeak anymore. And that is really good. So if the, uh, the motor itself, it is working, I probably save it. The only way is to test the motor if it is working correctly or not, is to install it in the unit, uh, connect its wires and play a cassette using the unit. And then you can, uh, or I can judge if the motor, it is working correctly or not. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to reinstall this motor into its place and secure it with its holding screws. And I'm going afterward to move to the next step. And that is the uh, uh, cleaning the uh, main PC board and cleaning uh, the switches in that uh, PC board. So after a lot of brushing I was able to make the board clean like it should be and as we can see it is very clean. Also I had to uh, desolder and remove the uh, record play switch, the function selector switch and the band selector switch from their places in order so I can clean them up correctly. Now, previously we saw that the entire PC board, it was filled with uh, dust and dirt and with the brushing, I was able to remove the external uh, dust and dirt, but the internal dust and dirt that it was uh, existed inside of the uh, switches themselves, uh, the only way to remove them uh, is uh, by uh, using a cleaning solution. So I tried to clean them up with the cleaning solution, but after a lot of tries, I was able to make some of the uh, contacts to work. But the others, uh, they kept uh, disconnecting. So the only logical uh, way in order so I can clean them up correctly is to remove them, tear them down and clean the contacts inside of them individually. And here is the uh, switches. As we can see, here is the uh, band selector switch, the function selector switch, and the record uh, select uh, the record play selector switch. So as I said, I'm going to tear them down, and clean all of the uh, contacts inside of them uh, individually. After that, I'm going to re uh, uh, reassemble them and resolder them back into their places. And with this way, I can guarantee that they will work. Also, as we can see, I uh, desolder and remove the road, uh, the rod antenna from its place. And here is the rod antenna. 
As we can see, if I just zoom in a little bit, we can see that the factory used these jumpers in order so they can solder the pins uh, of the uh, rod antenna to the uh, PCB. And if I just zoom out a little bit and flip the board to the other side, I will show you why I had to remove it. Now the rod antenna, it was installed in the PCB in this way and soldered uh, as I said uh, with the jumpers but with the existence of the rod antenna in this uh, position there is no way that I was able to reach the uh, the pins of the uh, band selector switch or the pins of the uh, function selector switch and I cannot uh, remove the solder on these pins so after I remove it out of the way, I was able to reach these uh, pins and remove the solder with ease. Also, uh, after uh, I, I sprayed the, uh, the FM mode uh, switch, I was able to make it work like it should be. And uh, I confirmed that it is working correctly after I uh, switch it a lot of times and it uh, was uh, acting in the correct way. So there is no need for it to be removed out of the uh, and desoldered out uh, of the PCB. Also, I desoldered and removed the volume key from its place because after I take a look or a closer look to it, we can I saw that the dust and dirt it was accumulated in uh, in all over the uh, the resistance wafer in it, and with the uh, a trying. And if I try to clean it with the uh, cleaning solution, it will work for a while but uh, after that it, it will malfunction so the only logical way in order so i can make sure that this will function correctly is uh, to remove it desolder it tear it down and clean the uh, the resistance or the carbon wafer uh, individually and after that i'm going to uh, re uh, reassemble it and resolder it back into its place as for the other two keys, the balance uh, key and the tone key, after I cleaned them up with the uh, cleaning solution, they worked without any kind of problems and they, uh, there is no need for them to be uh, desoldered or removed from the PCB. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start the cleaning up uh, process and after that, I will uh, resolder them back into their places and then I will move from there. So here is the door and as we can see it is dirty as hell and there is a lot of broken pieces in it. There is broken pieces in here and in this edge. But beside that everything looks okay. So what I'm going to do, I will start with the cleaning up process and then I will uh, try to fix and repair the broken pieces uh, in it. So after some work I was able to repair and install the door as we can see. And here is the door after I install it and repair it. And we can see that it is working like it should be. Also I change uh, and modify the uh, eject mechanism for the door that control the door and if I just flip the, uh, the front cover and take a look at it we can see that I designed these uh, spring contraption that control uh, the, uh, the door itself. Now as we can see if I try to open the door we can see that it is opening and closing in the correct way and the spring tension it is very very adequate for this type of uh, design. Now the original uh, spring uh, mechanism that the factory used they use this type of uh, spring and they install it in here. And this side of the spring it is what push the door open 
but the uh, the fault was using this type of uh, spring and this type of arrangement that the uh, first of all the spring uh, arms they are short and they will put too much pressure in the uh, in this area of the door so uh, if the owner or anyone who uses this uh, unit he uh, push the ejector and uh, there is a huge chance that the door will snap uh, off and it will break if the door allowed to uh, be uh, push it or to be ejected brutally so yeah but with the uh, design that I use as we can see it is a lot more uh, practical and there is uh, a huge uh, convenience with the opening and closing the door as we can see so after the door it is now fully uh, repaired and installed I'm going to uh, move to the full assembly of the entire unit and I will start with the back cover and install all of the component in it and then I will proceed from there So I reinstalled all of the components in the back cover as I said and everything went into its place without any kind of problems. Also I resoldered the wires for the uh, motor and as we can see here is the correct way to solder these wires. So now what I'm going to do I'm going to connect the speaker uh, plug to its place in the main PC board and I'm going to connect the uh, power cord to the uh, AC socket of the unit in order so I can power it up and see how this thing it is going to work. So I connected the speaker plug to its place in the main PC board and also I connected the power cord to its socket and now I'm going to try to power on the unit and we will see what will happen. So here is the function key and I believe it is in the cassette position. So let's try first the cassette. So here is the play. As we can see everything it is appears to be working normally. Let's try the uh, rewind. Okay. The forward. Also the forward it is working like it should be. So let's try the uh, FM or the radio position. I believe this is the radio. There, here is the FM and let's boost up the volume. As we can see, everything seems okay. Set the balance to medium, the tone to maximum. Everything seems okay. Now I haven't connected a uh, or installed the uh, telescopic antenna. As we can see, we are starting to receive stations when I turn the variable with my hand. Really nice. So the FM, it is obviously working like it should be. Let's try the AM. Now the AM, all what we are going to get is static. As I said earlier, there isn't much uh, station still broadcasting on the AM. So yeah, shortwave one. The same result, shortwave 2, yeah, so we can see that the radio section it is working like it should be and now what we are, what I'm going to do I'm going to grab a cassette 
in order so I can see how the uh, tape mechanism it is going to sound like. So I grabbed two cassettes for my tape collection in order so I can test this thing out and I'm going to use this one in order so I can see if the tape mechanic it is going to run correctly or not. So here we go as we can see tape is in. Let's lower the volume and hit play and see what will happen. So as we can see once I hit play the tape it is rolling like it should be and there is no problem regarding the uh, rotation of it and that is really good. So now what I'm going to do I'm going to uh, push stop and try to rewind it as we can see it is rolling like it should be let's try forward as we can see forward it is forwarding the tape like it should be seems to be working correctly so now what I'm going to do I'm going to switch the tape and use this one and see what this unit it is going to sound like so here's the tape has been switched and now let's push the play boost up the volume and see what we are going to get Okay. 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 Still nothing. Okay. Wow. Really nice. That's really nice. So let me uh, stop this and uh, make the adjustment, the azimuth and the uh, tape speed and then I will continue from there. So as we can see after some adjustment, uh, here is the final result that I was able to get. That is really nice. And the sound quality it is excellent now the mic and this camera it is not going to uh, give you the uh, correct uh, sensation but it is working like it should be and the uh, sound uh, it is excellent so I believe the tape mechanism it is now fully operational and what I'm going to do now I'm going to disconnect uh, the uh, the AC plug and the speakers, reinstall the speakers into uh, the front cover and then I will proceed from there. So I reinstalled the two speakers into their places and I secure them with their holding screws. Also I refit the wires into their holders and everything went like it should be. Also, I reinstall the uh, tuning needle and the tuning shaft into their places and I grease them up. So all what I have to do now is uh, reinstall the front cover into the back cover and we will see how this unit it is going to be fully assembled. So I reassembled the unit uh, as I said and everything went into its place without any kind of problems. Also I made 
a mistake earlier when I was counting the uh, the screws that uh, they join and secure the two half of the uh, body of the unit I miss uh, counting this one so there is eight screws that hold and secure the two half of the uh, cabinet together not seven as we can see uh, the unit it is now fully assembled and let's try the uh, the door opening as we can see the door it opened and closed in the correct way now with, the, with this type of uh, door that it doesn't have a uh, a gear or a smoothing uh, gear that open the door smoothly you have to uh, put your hand or your finger like so in order so it can absorb the chalk so but anyway there is no problem in uh, opening and closing this door so yeah it is working perfectly also I readjusted uh, the needle and if I turn the uh, the tuning needle or the tuning shaft we can see that the uh, tuning needle it controls without any kind of problems and everything it is working like it should be so now what I'm going to do I'm going to connect the power to this unit and we will see how it is going to work after I completely reassemble it so the power cord it is connected to the power socket of the unit and now let's uh, turn it on and see how it is going to work so radio it is on and it is on the FM I haven't installed the uh, telescopic antenna yet I and I will do it afterward so but for now as we can see everything it is working like it should be and the uh, tuning shaft it is controlling the variable capacitor rail and also the uh, tuning needle correctly without any kind of problems let's uh, move to the cassette in order so we can uh, try the uh, the cassette section here we go as we can see really really nice everything it is working perfectly even in the uh, tape mechanism or in the tape section like uh, we seen before so in the end uh, I believe we have a perfectly working unit and it is back almost like it was from the factory all what it is left is to install the telescopic antenna and secure it with its holding screw and my job here it is done and this unit it is ready to be delivered to the owner so I hope you enjoy this video if you did please like subscribe thank you for watching see you next time